Hey, hey, party people. In this video, I'm going to go over the components of a basic industrial overlock or serger machine. What's the difference between an overlock and a serger? Nothing. Apparently, North Americans call these sergers, but I went to fashion school in the US and we always called them overlocks. This is a five thread overlock, which means you have two options. You can thread three cones and get this wrap around stitching that wraps around the edge of the fabric. And you can thread all five cones and get this straight stitch alongside the wrapping effect. There are also four thread overlocks and they only do the wrapping thing, but with four threads, it's sturdier. If the whole seam is done with just the wrapping overlock, four thread is the sturdier, better choice. If you're using overlock only to finish the edge of the fabric, three thread wrapping is fine. Some people will use a regular single needle lock stitch machine to do the initial seam and then finish with an overlock. Some people will sew it all in one go. It kind of depends on the sewing process usually. Most industrial overlocks are pretty similar to each other. I don't have any experience with home sergers. So I am just talking about industrials most industrials are similar to each other. However, I am a designer who knows how to sew. I'm not a machinist. I'm not a factory owner who can compare a lot of machines to each other. I am not the person to ask for machine buying advice. That being said, this Juki MO2400 is probably older than me and it still works beautifully. Industrials can do that. They can last forever if you take care of them. Like most other industrials, they come set into the table. The motor is down here. There's your power button. And there's a little drawer right there for your tools. Here are your pedals. The one on the left is the one that makes it sew. The one on the right raises the sewing foot, this one. This sewing machine came with the lamp installed and it'll turn on when I turn the machine on but you gotta get your own chair. You may have noticed I have five different threads going on. Why? Because this is the easiest way to set up your machine. You're gonna be trying to thread five threads in this tiny little thing. Look, here's my hand for scale. It's a small machine and all these threads are gonna overlap all over each other. So the best way to do it is to use a different color for every thread. And then you can thread the machine, you can stitch it, the golden brown is the bobbin for the seam. If you have tension problems, you can tell which of these tension dials you need to fix, because they're all different colors, and you can match up the color. And then once that's all fixed, you can switch out the colors, you know, tie a knot to the end and then pull the knots through. And just like the single needle, the only part the knot won't go through is the actual needle. There are two needles here and those are the only ones where your the knot will not go through. I'm gonna walk you through the five colors, and then I'm going to thread from scratch one of these to show you kind of some of my techniques. Let's start with the far right, the yellow cone. We've got the thread cone, and we thread it up to the top bar of the thread stand, back to front, and then we go down to this thread stand branch, and here we have it going back to front, and then up, and then going down to the machine. And then again, wrapping around this pole back to front and then up and then going down to the tension. At this point, I'm gonna open up the table. There's no catch or anything, it just opens. Now this usually just closes nice and neat 
but my machine is old and I never bothered fixing this little door because it has no effect on how it sews. But usually you just slide it open and inside the door is this handy dandy color coded key to how to thread the machine. We can open the machine up further by twisting this and opening this up, which you're gonna need to do to thread this, which is essentially the bobbin thread for your straight stitch, this brown one. You can also push down this lever and release the foot to clear even more space. And if you really want to, you can remove this uh, plate that protects the feed dogs and really get in there. And then we can get all under these needles. And then, and then, and then, we can open up this thingy and open it up some more. Ta-da! We're following the yellow thread. Back to front, top to bottom, goes through this hole. Here are tension discs. And this is the tension dial. Righty tighty, lefty loosey, right? So once you've threaded everything and tried sewing it, that's when you can start kind of working with the tension dials. Now we're gonna follow the diagram down here and go down this hole, through this one, and this one. And if you look carefully, the holes are color-coded. So this one has a little blue dot, this one has a little blue dot, okay? This one has a little yellow dot, and so forth and so forth. So you're being guided through. So we follow the, the yellow here, across here, through here, up here to this needle. Same with the red back to front, top to bottom, through this hole, slip it in between the tension discs. And a lot of the time when you're pulling your knots through, you'll want to pull your tension discs apart so the knot can slide through easily, okay? Through down this hole here, and then follow, follow the yellow brick road, follow the yellow brick road, okay? If you look at our handy dandy cheat sheet, you will know that the blue one, number three, and the brown one, number one, go into the straight stitch, which means the yellow, red, and the white go into the overlock wrapping stitch. So it's this one, this one, and then this one. So the white is actually the first one. Follow the diagram, okay? Don't get confused. And this is red. It goes through this top hole, around the tension discs, through this top hole, and then follow this to this red dot. And then it's going to be threaded through the back needle. Very important note, industrial overlock sewing machine needles are different from industrial straight stitch, lock stitch machine, regular sewing machine needles. This long one is for the regular sewing machine and this short one is for the overlock. The whole needle is shorter. This wide shank that gets fitted into the machine is much shorter, all right? Do not interchange these. They are similar in the fact that there's a long groove in the front and like a short little notch in the back. Another very important difference between the lock stitch and the overlock is on the straight stitch, you set your needle so that you're threading it left to right. But on overlock machines, you set the needle with the long groove facing you and thread it front to back. Both of them. All right, we are going to thread this golden brown thread and it runs up the thread stand into the thread stand branch 
and down. So we are threading this whole thing from scratch. Some people like to use these regular tweezers where you squeeze them shut. And some people like to use these kinds of tweezers where you squeeze them open. For this kind of overlock threading stuff, I like to use these that are for jewelry makers and they have a very pointy end. And I find that the bent pointy end is very useful. By the way, the diagram is under this silver plate. It's gonna come in handy in a second, okay? So we have this golden brown thread. I'm gonna grab it with my tweezers. And first, we're going to thread it through this first hole. If, I, if you find it difficult to thread, sometimes the thread just needs a nice crisp end so you can trim off any curly, unraveled fraying bits. And then there's another hole down here, like so. I wish this lamp wasn't in the way, but it's not like I can really tear it out, but it's just a straight shot. Now the tricky thing is there is this hollow rod that the thread has to go through and instead of trying to push thread, pushing thread is really hard, y'all. Here's what I do, okay? I pull a length. I use this, which is a spaghetti turner. It's got this loop and it's got this latch at the top. Put your spaghetti turner in here. There's like this metal branch here, support beam. And you need to put your spaghetti turner in here, latch, the thread in here, and then turn it back and hold on to the end of the thread with your hand. You're going to push the thread through so that you can pull it out the other side. And then you just pull the spaghetti turner out. Ta-da! Now that we've pulled the thread through the hollow rod, we open this up and now we have this diagram right here for this thread. First we go, if I look a little awkward doing this, it's like I'm trying to get the right angle so you can see what I'm doing. It goes a little bit faster when I don't have to worry about someone watching. <laughs> And then we're gonna go through these tension discs here. And then we're gonna go through this hole next. And then we're gonna go through here and then hook there there's a hole up top and we're gonna go top to bottom. Like that. We're gonna go left to right at this hole. Like so. And then we're gonna go back to front. And these instructions are for my point of view. So it'll be your point of view when you're sitting in front of the machine. And then we have this hole over here. Sometimes if it gets really awkward, I'll push through with one pair of tweezers and pull through with another pair of tweezers. You wanna move these threads carefully out of the way. These are the other four, right? I'm gonna move this foot out of the way. And what we have left is to thread the giant needle. Now, sometimes it'll get stuck under the feed dog. So what you wanna do is put your foot on the left pedal ever so gently so that you can move the hand wheel all the way out here. The machine is still turned off, and if you don't press down on the pedal, you won't be able to move the hand wheel. Just ever so lightly push it, and then you'll be able to move the hand wheel just enough. You see the needles, 
they're crisscrossing like this as they sew, you can just open it up to access the needle that you need. This part here, this is the needle that we want. And this one is gonna go back to front. Oh, this one is so awkward. Thank God for editing. Oh, hey, that wasn't that too bad this time. <laughs> Usually I get stuck on that one for a while. And then I'm gonna push it a little bit more. And the way I have it positioned is the needle, the eye of the needle is sitting right in between the feed dogs so that I can get my tweezers in there. So here we go. We're gonna get in there in between the feed dogs, push it through. I'm feeling cross-eyed right now. Oh my goodness. And pull it out. And there's gonna be, it's gonna go front to back. There's a little gap in those feed dogs so you can do that. Ta-da! And you're done. What you wanna do next is pull up the needles using the hand wheel. And you need to put this plate back on. So we're gonna move the threads very carefully out of the way. And the feed dogs are right there, so it's really easy to find the exact spot this is supposed to go. Okay, okay now the needles are in the way, so oh, there we go. Just slides right in. And now you can see really how handy it was to remove that little plate, right? but make sure you put this back in before you start sewing. You've got the threads out of the way. Always be careful. Always know where your threads are because if you lose track, then you have to like re-thread, you know, first couple of holes, you know, all this sort of business. There's that. And then we put the foot back in. We put this cap down. Normally we would pop this back thing in, but mine doesn't work. The knife in there trims the fabric and then it goes down this, the excess goes down this chute instead of the trimmed fabric just falling all over your lap. All right, let's turn this sucker on. Normally this lamp turns on when I turn the machine on, but I have all my studio lights going all crazy. So I'm gonna turn this off for now. And then I'm going to lift the right pedal so I can lift the foot. I'm gonna, there's the ed, the inside edge and this outside edge. And I'm gonna line my fabric with the inside edge. And go as far as it'll go towards the needles and put the foot down. Some students get freaked out because the whole knife thing and they can't undo some mistakes and stuff. And I understand that. But in general, industrial overlocks are easier to control and slower than a lock stitch. Do I need to mess with the tension? Yes, I do. There's some stuff going on but at least I know which ones need fixing, AKA this yellow one. If you want just the wrap wraparound, all you have to do is pull this gold one and this blue one out, pull it out completely, and then sew, and you'll just get the three thread wraparound. I hope you found this video helpful and useful. Please do give it a thumbs up if you learned something new today. Share, subscribe. Drop me all your questions in the comment section. Check the description box below for links to related videos, links to my social media, all that good stuff. Threading an overlock is not something you do over caffeinated and in a hurry. Trust me on this one, I speak from experience. But it is not this huge, overwhelming, crazy thing that is impossible to do. You know what I always say, practice not magic right? Have fun on your overlocks and I'll see you in the next video. You will want to kind of open your tension discs, discs. 
Oh, I've been saying discs all day. You don't want to pull your tension discs. 